Okay, hello everybody, my name is Dave, and uh, this is the first in a series of videos that I'm going to be doing on our constitutional rights and how a lot of people are working to you know, take away a lot of the rights that we've enjoyed for over 200 years now. Um, starting off with the Second Amendment, because that's the one I'm the most passionate about right now, because I'm, you know, I'm planning on becoming armed, I'm planning on you know, getting to a place where I can defend myself out in public. Um, so I'm going to start off with the Second Amendment. And this is a response to a lot of people who want to say that, you know, it is not our right to carry arms. We shouldn't be we shouldn't be carrying anything to defend ourselves and things like that. So I just want to go through um, constitutional law and the way it applies to the right to bear arms and a couple of other things in the Constitution that backs up this uh, position that I have. So as you can see on the screen, um, this is going to be a PowerPoint presentation. I'm just going to walk you through it via voice uh, for two reasons. First off, PowerPoints are easy to follow and I can give you visual. You know, some people see it visually and it's better for them that way. And secondly, I'm just not comfortable putting my face out on the internet. So we'll do it that way. Um, on the screen in front of you, our rights have been trampled. They have been trampled all over for the last however many years that you know, these people have been coming out saying, oh, this and this and this and that, too dangerous this and too dangerous that, and, you know, they, they've lost sight of what America is supposed to be. So, here we go. What is the Second Amendment? As you can see, it says, specifically, a well-regulated militia being necessary to, secure, uh, f to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, a lot of people try to twist this to say that, as you can see, on the, as I wrote on the screen, they'll try to make it say that, you know, you have to be part of a militia, and if you're not, then you're not allowed to carry a firearm or anything like that. But the original purpose of this amendment was that the people needed a means of self-defense. Now, people will say, well, this was 200 years ago, and they didn't have automatic rifles and things like that, and blah, 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 blah. But the purpose of the amendment still applies today. All right. Every American needs to have the means to defend themselves against people who might come against them. Now, yeah, does everybody need to be walking around with an assault rifle? Probably not, but it should be the option of every American to have one, just in case. What happens if, you know, uh, gangbangers decide they're going to come up onto your property and, you know, they have automatic weapons? Why should I not be able to have one to defend myself? Okay? Um... One of these things that I've, you know, I've read about and I've seen this particular slide here I wrote up because it takes between 9 and 11 minutes for the police to respond after a 9 call. That's, that's after somebody calls the police. However many minutes happen between something that goes down and then somebody calls the police, you add that time onto that, okay? If you're facing a criminal with a gun, you know, that's, that's at the very minimum, 9 minutes too long. All right. I mean, a knife-wielding guy could come in and stab you in the face and then take your possessions and be way gone before the law enforcement ever gets there. And then even if there are witnesses who saw that, assuming that they're not too intimidated to speak up, the damage is already done. You've already been stabbed. You've already been robbed. You've already had this horrible thing done to you, and you have to live with that for the rest of your life. But if you had a gun, you would be able to stop them. This moves me on to my next section of this whole thing is state laws against regarding anything firearm re or arms related firearms knives weapons of any kind are completely illegal according to the constitution and that's backed up by the 10th amendment all right the 10th amendment says the power is not delegated to the united states by this constitution or prohibited by it to the states are reserved for the states respectively or to the people and this 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 provision was put in here so that the states would have the power to make laws regarding certain you know menial things that need to be you know spelled out in the law this does not give the states the right to say we allow you to make changes to things that we put out we put down in the constitution all right this means that local governments state governments are not authorized to pass any law regarding a firearm because it is covered in the constitution all right states that pass laws like this are completely illegal because the Constitution specifically states, specifically pertaining to the, the Second Amendment, is that the rights of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. All right? The word infringed means, as you can see on the definition there, to encroach upon in a way that violates law or the rights of another. All right? The Bill of Rights, all of the first ten amendments to our Constitution were set up because we they were establishing the rights that we as citizens have as a United States citizen. 
Okay? Every state in the country is in violation of the Constitution because every state has regulations passed that are, you know, restricting the acquisition and possession of weapons in some form or fashion. Okay? Now, wh wh whether you believe that, you know, we should put, put impose restrictions or shouldn't impose restrictions is, is beside the point. Uh, the point here is, is that uh, the Constitution is the supreme law of the land, okay? And it trumps any, any, any other law that comes that contradicts it. Um, if you want to change the law, that's perfectly fine, but it needs to be through an amendment to the Constitution. I have, I personally have never heard of any kind of amendment to uh, that contradicts the Second Amendment, and until that happens, I don't understand how we're still able to enforce these federal, state, local government laws that are, you know, banning this weapon and that weapon. Okay, I personally, I mean, I'll, I, I'll personally agree with some of the anti-gun people saying that yeah, your everyday average Joe probably shouldn't have an assault weapon, but you can't go about it by just, oh, we're just going to pass this law and say you can't have one. No. The Constitution protects us from that. All right, so <clears throat> putting aside the whole, you know, it's illegal for states to do this and governments to do that, even if we were just to lay down and accept that, there's another act, another article in the Constitution that uh, pertains to another thing that just boggles the mind uh, in our country, and that is um, Article 4, Section 1 of the original unamended Constitution. This is as they originally wrote it, before any changes were done. Full faith and credit shall be given in each state to the public acts, records, and judicial proceedings of every other state. And Congress may, by general laws, prescribe the manner in which such acts, records, and proceedings shall be proved, and the effect thereof. Now, this article was intended mostly for things like, you know, marriage certificates or, you know, uh, certificates of live birth and things like that, but it also applies to things like a concealed carry permit, okay? Now, a lot of the states have different rules and regulations regarding, you know, who can carry what and, and all that, things like that, which I'll remind you is completely illegal under the Constitution, but e even putting that aside, this particular article here was designed for uh, reciprocity between states. Um, the intent was is that if you had a document in one state, you should be able to go to another state, and that document is still valid. Okay. The second sentence of this of this particular article said it is basically just you know, it's saying that Congress can say um, this is how you will validate that this is a legitimate document. It doesn't it doesn't give them the authority to say that this document is valid here or there or not here or not there. It just says that this is how you will verify that it is a valid document. Okay, so basically, the whole point of this slide here is that um, every other state is required constitutionally to acknowledge the concealed carry permit of any any uh, person who has a, car uh, a permit in any other state. Okay, this is all in the Constitution, the supreme law of the land that trumps everything else. I don't understand why there's a lot of confusion on this. <laughs>